hello everyone welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here you're welcome and if you've been here before thank you very much for coming back my name is emily and i'm currently a third year medical student at dnipro medical institute in dnipro ukraine today's video is on how to apply for your residence permit in ukraine so i have some videos already on my channel on how to apply to study medicine at the new pro medical institute and also another video on how you could apply for ukrainian visa which is a long term type d visa that is required for you to study in ukraine so if you've not watched those videos kindly check them out because this video is a continuation of those videos i would like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers and everyone that's been watching my videos and liking my videos Thank you very much. I really appreciate you all. And if you're new here and if you're subscribed, kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so that you can be notified when I post new videos. So now to the application for the residence permit. I applied through Medlink students. So this video will also be in relation to applying through Medlink. So if you did not apply through Medlink, I am not sure if it will be the same process, but I'm just going to speak on applying through Medlink students. Medlink should send you few documents to guide you in relation to getting to the NIPRO, applying for your residence permit. So please read this information carefully so that you would have an up-to-date information about what it entails. So I will break the whole process of applying for the residence permit into three simple steps. So the first would be what you need to do before you go to the Nipro. The second would be how to get to the Nipro, and the third would be what would happen when you arrive at the Nipro. As with most things, it is advisable to start early. You should aim to arrive at the Nipro as early as at least one to two weeks before the term starts. 15th of September is usually the resumption date, so it's advisable to come at least the uh, last week of August or the first or second week of September. This will allow you some time to get things sorted, find accommodation and also settle in properly. So for you to apply for your residence permit, you should already have applied for your visa and also you should have received all your documents back from the visa application. So now you proceed to book your flights and accommodation. I would be talking more about this in the second step of how to get to the Nipro. So you need some document for you to apply for your residence permit. And this document includes an original passport, your educational certificate, which is your high school diploma, your transcript and certificate. I have an important information about these educational certificates towards the end of the video so make sure you keep watching the next document is the original invitation letter from the ministry of education in ukraine this is the actual letter that has been sent to your home address not a copy the original invitation letter then you need 12 passport styled photographs and also due to the covid 19 pandemic you need a proof of your COVID-19 immunization. Usually to be acceptable, you need to have two vaccinations of the COVID vaccine. You would also need medical insurance that covers COVID-19 and also insures you to up to 30,000 euros and a travel insurance also. I have some information about this in my last video on how to apply for a Ukrainian visa. So you can check this out for more information. Depending on the country you are coming from, you might require a proof of COVID test pre-departure, so not more than 72 hours. This can change based on the situation of COVID-19 uh, from country to country, but you might be required to have a COVID uh, test which needs to be negative pre-departure. So just make sure that you have the correct information as at the time that you will be traveling. If you are coming with a friend or a family member, make sure that they have met the COVID requirement also. Based on the nationality, they might not need a visa. If they are British, they could come into Ukraine for 90 days so they wouldn't need a visa but because you would be coming into ukraine as a student you need to apply for your student visa 
but your family members would not require that so finally make sure that all your tuition fee has been paid in full because that is how you'll be allowed to apply for your residence permit now to the second part on how to get to Dnipro. as i live in the uk i would only be able to speak on getting to ukraine from uk so if you live in any part of the world you might also find some information useful but this would mainly be on if you're traveling from the uk to book your flight i would advise you to book your flight on sky scanner or google flight to get a variety of flights make sure you search on the incognito mode this prevents sites from being able to use cookies to track your searches and know your preferences if you carry out your search on the normal google chrome it could sometimes result into higher fears when you go back to book that desired flight which you might have found earlier so if you book using the incognito mode you're more likely to get a cheaper flight the main airport in ukraine is the kiev borispo airport although there's another airport in kiev which is the kiev uh, Surani airport you can get direct flights from the uk to kiev from like london stamstead which line here from london gatwick with uia which is the ukrainian international airline then from manchester you could get uh, a flight with Ryanair for as cheap as 10 pounds return ticket then from london Lutsin to kiev suhani which is a different airport with Wiz air so these are direct flights from the uk going to kiev and should take an average of 3 hours 15 minutes to 3 hours 35 minutes you could also fly from other airports in aberdeen bristol edinburgh leeds glasgow but you would need to stop over in like amsterdam poland france and other countries and this will take longer for you to get there so on getting to kiev you would need to get to Dnipro. you can do this either by flying from kiev to Dnipro or by using the train or by using the bus a good place to search for flights or train or buses would be infobots it's a platform that allows you to search for your flight or your train or bus ticket directly to Dnipro and it allows you to pay in pounds or euros which is quite convenient another thing to consider outside your flight would be accommodation in Dnipro accommodation in Dnipro can be as cheap or as expensive as you would like it booking.com is quite good for searching for accommodation but a good thing to note is to book close to the city center like the mainland which is close to everything like the shopping mall and all the activities rather than booking at the other side of the bridge which is more for the residents of the Nipro. so book somewhere close to Mo city or the city center in the information booklet that medlinks will send you there are links to some hotels that would give you some discount so if that's available by the time you're going so you can check those hotels out the final step is what happens when you arrive at Dnipro. Once you've got your visa and booked your flight, you'll be required to fill a landing form to inform Medlink of your arrival date and time. So a personnel from Medlink would pick you up on arrival to Dnipro, not at Kiev. They will pick you up from Dnipro, either from Dnipro airport or bus station or train station. So make sure that it is obvious the method of transport you'll be coming by. And you need to stake this if you're flying or you're coming by train or by coach and also ensure that the arrival time that you would have on this form is the time you arrive at Dnipro and not any other city through which you'll be transiting two things you need to do when you land at the airport probably at Kiev airport the first thing would be for you to get a Ukrainian SIM card and this will enable you to contact the personnel that's going to pick you up from the airport or the bus or the train station when you arrive at the Nipro. It will be advisable for you to get this SIM card at Kiev Airport. The other thing you will need to do at the Kiev Airport is for you to exchange some currency. So if you coming from the UK, then you can exchange few pounds at the airport. When you get to the, the Nipro city, you can exchange more currency if you would like because there is a better rate at the city center in Dnipro than what you will get at the airport. 
Depending on your arrival time to Dnipro, you might be taken to the Medlink's office or straight to your accommodation. Also, you might be treated to a welcome meal at the at the restaurant where you will get to meet other students like yourself. When you go to the Medlink's office, you'll be required to submit your documents and sign a contract. So all the documents you brought, like your uh, transcript, your certificate, your letter of invitation from the Ministry of Education, your passport, all these documents will be um, required at the Medlink's office and you'll be required to sign a contract before you can proceed your application for the residence permit. After a day or two, you'll be required to go back to the Medlink's office to pick up a paper file with all your required paperwork, which you would take to the immigration office to make your application. It's quite important that you check this file and all the documents that you've been given thoroughly. Check your name, your date of birth, and any other date and important information in this file. If you notice that any information is wrong in this file, it's important that you get it changed at the Medlink's office before you go to the immigration office because you will definitely be sent back for any error to be corrected before they can process uh, your application. Medlink would guide you on how to get to the immigration office or they might even drop you there. At the immigration office, you get all your documents and the compact file checked by the receptionist. So if the details are correct, you'll be issued a number with which you'll be called to go into the consultation room or a room in which you will uh, meet with an immigration officer. This officer will ask you some questions like your name, your details, but and just double check the information on the document to make sure that it's correct. Once all your details are correct, you will proceed to pay a fee of about 1036 Griffin. You will pay this at the immigration office, then you will return back to like the waiting area. After some time, the immigration officer will then call you back into the consultation room. When you are called back, your passport photograph will be taken and also all your fingerprints will be taken. You will check that all the information inputted into the immigration uh, officer system to process your biometrics are correct. Then you will be required to sign another document to conclude your application. Once all this is done, you will receive an envelope with your health insurance and confirmation of your registration for a temporary residence permit. Also, you would get your passport back. The standard time it takes for your residence permit to be issued to you is about three weeks, three, four weeks, but you can get things done faster through Medlinks. They have some arrangement where they can get things done faster, less than three weeks, but you'll be required to pay additional fee for this. The immigration officer will require a telephone number through which they can notify you that your residence permit is ready. So when it is ready, then you can go and collect your residence permit. To collect your residence permit, you will be required to go back to the immigration office and also you will need to have your passport with you. When you get back to the immigration office, they would ask you for your name and just check out all the details are correct. Then a fingerprint will be taken and also you will sign another document to say that you've received your residence permit. Then you now have to take this permit to the Medlin's office to get a scan copy of this permit taken. So that pretty much concludes the process of applying for your residence permit in Ukraine. This will allow you to reside in Ukraine for the duration of your course. So just to round this up, I'm just going to give you some tips on how to make this a good experience for you where you are applying for your residence permit. So the first one is the time you go. If you go around September, the weather is usually still mild. So you just need a light jacket to keep warm. Try not to go in the first weekend in September because there's usually a Jewish festival in Dnipro. And also this is the time during which all students will be coming back for resumption. So the traffic at the airport is usually uh, a lot you would have to stay longer to go through border control so to avoid it it would be nice for you to come maybe the last weekend in august or the second weekend or during the week in september you will need to get a two pin european adapter this is the reward will allow you to use all your mobile 
devices from the UK at Dnipro. So you can get this as cheap as one pound from Poundland. Get a power pack because you can burn out of battery because you'll be using a lot of Google apps and translators and Google Maps. So your battery might run out quite quickly. So make sure you get a power pack. The next one is to take an unlocked phone so that you can use your Recreation SIM card on your phone as soon as you get to Kiev. So this is an important information about the educational document. Make sure that you have notarized copied or stamped copies by your school or by your university that you can submit as original so this document will be written at your university for the duration of your course. These documents will not be given back to you. Your official transcript and your certificate will be retained by the university. So if you would not want this to happen, you'd be advised that you get a notarized copy so that you can always have your original copies with you. Another thing is for you to take sufficient cash that you could change into grieving because you would not be able to open a bank account until you get your residence permit. So make sure that you have enough cash to sustain you for a period of time before you get things sorted. Still on the note of cash, make sure that you have some euros with you if you're stopping over in another European country like Poland or like France so that if you need to get something, you have money to spend on that. To get you going also, you can get a Monzo card which allows you to withdraw up to £200 per month without any fees. Exchange a few pounds at the airport on arrival that will just be sufficient for you to get a SIM card and probably just an extra amount of money. When you get to Dnipro, you can exchange as much as you want at a better rate. So the last point is when you get your SIM card at the airport, you'll be able to have access to internet for easy communication. The guys at the airport will help you to get the SIM running and make sure that it's all set up ready for you to use. Um, apps would make your life easier when you get to the Nipro. The first one is Google Translate. You would find a lot of people that don't communicate in English, so having Google Translate will help you to communicate with the indigenous and also you can get one with camera even if you're at the supermarket you like to get something and it's written in Russian or Ukrainian you can use this camera to scan and it will translate the language to English for you. Another app that will be useful for you is Google Maps. Google Maps to be able to navigate the city and maybe an offline copy of the Nipro map that might be handy if you have no access to internet connection. Then the last one would be Uclon. It's for taxis that enables you to get around. It's cheaper than Uber and also you can request for a minimum charge for a trip. This is the minimum price at which a taxi driver will be willing to offer you a ride so it's quite good that you could set your limit to how much you can afford it's cheaper than uber and you can request for the minimum charge for a trip i feel i've covered a lot of information about applying for residence permits in ukraine thank you very much for listening if you've not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe like and share my videos and also if you would need me to do any other um, videos kindly let me know i will try as much as possible to cover these topics thank you very much once again and i'll see you in my next video bye for now